project and, and further success. Um, Arik Zevi in, in Athens, Arik Zevi is now the honorary chair of the Maccabi Yah Games in 2022. We brought him over to the States to speak in Philadelphia a little over a year ago, um, as well as some of the more recent uh, success in, in Rio at the last, believe it or not, that's, that's still the last Olympics, um, even though it was now almost five years ago. Uh, we had an event, um, one of our online events early on during the pandemic was with Oris uh, Sasson, a great interview uh, with him. And I know there are a number of, uh, of hopefuls in judo who have had success in recent months <clears throat> in, um, in global competition. So it bodes well for, uh, for this summer. Also bodes well for this summer. Um, again, I'm, I'm guessing with this crowd, if you're attending the sports affinity group, and I know a couple people are baseball fans. A few of us are still lamenting Mookie Betts' departure from the Red Sox. Um, although happy for his success in LA. But if you're f attending the Sports Affinity Group, uh, you're likely aware that Team Israel nabbed one of only six spots in baseball's return to the Olympics in Tokyo. Obviously, um, they, the Olympics should have happened by now. I think officially they never changed the logo. If, if I recall, that's why I was only able to find the 2020 version. I think they kept their logo and it'll still be God willing, if the Olympics happen, it will still be referred to as the 2020 Olympics. Uh, but as you know, uh, Team Israel made up mainly of ball players who grew up in the U.S. Uh, miraculously qualified uh, for the Olympics. We've had a number of events online touching upon that that miracle, um, and uh, have a strong partnership uh, with Peter Kurtz and the rest of uh, Israel baseball, and we're excited to to see them off. Um, ideally, we'll be able to partner with Team Israel on some events here in the States this summer. They did have a series of uh, training uh, events and games planned uh, before the pandemic took over uh, last summer in some ballparks up and down the East Coast. And we'll see if they're able to do that uh, this coming year. So again, needless to say, um, you know, the organization uh, with, with our roots um, in, in Israel's Olympic hopes, um, you know, realized uh, we, you know, soon shifted um, to focus mainly on putting a delegation together for the Maccabi Yah Games every year. We became, we soon became the official territorial organization of Maccabi World Union, if you will, the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee to the IOC, to the International Olympic Committee. That's a a pretty fair comparison here in terms of um, Maccabi USA being the convener and, for, and organization that forms the delegation uh, to the Maccabi Yah Games. And speaking of which, um, in the 1990s, Maccabi USA became officially recognized by the US Olympic and Paralympic Committee along with <clears throat> a handful of other organizations, uh, let's say 30, 30 to 40 other organizations as a, a recognized affiliate organization of the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic movement. Take a step back here and, and talk about our recent strategic plan. Um, we just completed our first strategic planning process uh, in a, a couple decades, which we're very excited about. Um, the vision that we see moving forward for Maccabi USA is to cr help create a world where sports serve as a galvanizing force in strengthening Jewish pride, connection, and community. I would say that this, this affinity group is a wonderful example. You know, we at Maccabi USA have a vested interest as of sports being a, a connector, a glue that ties the Jewish community together, whether that's on a global stage, at a macro level, or at a, uh, a local uh, level with uh, each of your synagogue affiliations and, and the national affiliation that ties everyone together. Um, in terms of what what we do and, and what purpose we serve in our mission statement. We build Jewish pride through sports. That's uh, been our memorable tagline for a number of decades now. We build Jewish pride through sports and promote support for Israel, Zionism, and Jewish continuity through athletic, educational, and cultural experiences for particip participants of all ages. And later on in the presentation, I'll hit upon some of the 
educational cultural experiences that we offer and and also also that piece about participants of all ages. So we have a few uh, key values that we identified, uh, you know, athletics and uh, excellence and, and teamwork and sportsmanship are at the core um, of what we offer and what we do. As I mentioned, you know, Jewish continuity and Jewish pride um, are critical aspects of, of, of the organization. We have a particular focus on tikkun olam, preparing the world for us. Uh, we have a signature program that we offer uh, at our games called Lev, Lev Le Lev, Heart to Heart. Um, having a, as diverse and inclusive an organization and delegation as possible is critical. You see here um, a picture of both our able-bodied and para-athletes at Masada. Um, that's one form of inclusion, uh, but additionally across other uh, aspects of, uh, of Jewish life and, and the U.S. community as well. We have a deep connection to Israel, as you've heard, uh, and at the root of, of the organization's history, and then a deep belief in the power of sports to build community. <coughs> in the interest of time, I think I'll skip over the next couple slides, um, but as part of our strategic planning process, we identified our core competencies. Of course, we called it our scouting report in true sports organizational fashion. And additionally, we identified areas for growth in, related to those uh, four key competencies that we have and identified a path forward focused on broader community engagement, focused on sports and the sports offerings that we, that we have and about building community uh, with uh, the, both our alumni base as well as uh, the broader sports and sports interested community, all in service of, of our vision of sports serving as a galvanizing force that I described earlier. When we think about our, our efforts, we think about it in terms of five different levels of connection. We wanna connect our athletes to the global Jewish community. Um, I think you'll get a sense of that in a bit, but delegations from 80 countries around the world coming together in Israel, giving our athletes a sense of the, the global community they're a part of, coming together in Israel, connecting them to Israel and, and the people of Israel. That also takes place when we get together around the world in some of our regional games in Europe and Latin America. Israel always sends a delegation. Connecting to one another in the Maccabi USA delegation, so a sense of, of US Jewish community and pride the specific team that you're on, and then finally, uh, your own Jewish identity and growth. So 2017, we worked with the Cohen Center for Modern Jewish Studies at Brandeis to um, really for the first time begin providing uh, a study of, of the impact uh, that Maccabi ah has on our athletes. And you know, we were excited before my arrival, but we were excited to see the deep impact that that it does have on our athletes. You see some of the statistics here. 92% um, felt um, the experience in Israel was a journey to their Jewish roots. 88% uh, felt closer to Israel, close to 80% wanted to go back. Um, you know, birthright's a great experience and highly recommend it. I staffed three of those trips uh, when, I was, uh, when I was at Hillel. Uh, you know, that very much is a life-changing experience also. You know, of the participants, of ours uh, in 2017 who had done both Maccabi ah and Birthright. You know, 46% felt Maccabi ah was more impactful. And there are some, you know, natural reasons. One, the length of our program is, is three weeks uh, instead of two. And I think, you know, just as important to experience Israel doing something that you're so passionate about. And for most of our athletes has consumed, um, in a good way, consumed their lives to that point and then to, to have that merge with uh, such an identity building experience and in a place that's um, so meaningful, I think um, gives, up, gives us a leg up in that comparison. So I've made reference here or there, certainly made reference to Maccabi, but I've also made reference to some global uh, games that take place. You see here the suite of international competition that takes place under the Maccabi World Union umbrella that we send delegations to. In the upper left corner, you see the logo from the most recent Pan-American Maccabi Games. 
which took place in July 2019 in Mexico. Uh, in recent years, they've taken place in Chile and Brazil. In 2023, they're scheduled to take place in Buenos Aires. Um, and that's a wonderful Latin American centered experience that we send a large delegation to. Again, Israel sends a de large delegation to and other countries from around the world um, send athletes to. Similarly, in 2019 were the most recent European Maccabi games. Typically, those games are separated by six months because typically the Pan American Maccabi games take place <coughs> in our winter, in their summer. Um, but the uh, Mexico is in is in our uh, uh, summer, so those took place in July. Both took place in July in 2019. Those were in Budapest, in Hungary. Uh, most uh, in recent years, they've taken place in Berlin. That was a very powerful experience, from what I understand. In 2015, literally. Um, in um, the place and in some of the same uh, arenas where um, the 1936 um, Olympics took place and, and obviously what followed with the Holocaust. Uh, the Maccabi uh, as we've talked about in the Maccabi Youth Games, uh, the inaugural edition were in 2018 uh, in Israel and Haifa. So a bit about the delegation that we send to those games. Um, and the overall delegation, you get a sense of the size. So 13,000 uh, athletes and participants expected at the next Maccabi. Yeah, we're hoping that our US delegation, COVID aside, will be 1,300 strong, which would be our biggest delegation ever. That would be athletes and coaches and managers and doctors. And you get a sense here of some of the other uh, delegations um, and, and, uh, and games. You know, typically, the US, after the host country, is the biggest delegation at these games. Um, and um, you see this, this scope. We won't go into every detail here, but a nice timeline, a bit about what we've talked about so far. Again, 1895, the Maccabi movement named for Judah Maccabee is, uh, is, is begun. The first Maccabi, Maccabi Games in 1932, the interruption that I mentioned, you get a sense of the scale in 1977. We had our delegation was size was a little over 300 on through to the most recent games in 2017, where our delegation size was over 1,180 countries participating, 10,000 athletes. All right, so we've made it to Maccabi Yah. You see the new dates here, July 12th to 26th, 2022. Uh, a bit about the numbers that we're uh, anticipating, uh, those athletes, the number of individual competitions or tournaments that take place across all the sports and different age groups. 47 sports, uh, the number of medals awarded. We have three main age groups, uh, junior, open, um, and masters. Keep that seed planted. There might be some open athletes on this call potentially, but I'm sure there are some potential masters athletes, so uh, keep it in mind. Uh, and it takes place in main, uh, four main cities, Jerusalem, Haifa, Netanya, and Tel Aviv. And this is the point where I hope the technology works to give you a sense uh, of what the Maccabi experience is like with a short video. Señoras y señores, tenemos el orgullo de presentar la Maccabi Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to present to you the Maccabi
All right. So you get a nice sense of the variety of sports and competition and the action. Ice hockey might have jumped out at people as a surprise. I'm sure others did. I'll be eager to check out the chat uh, and the Q&A in a bit and, and see your thoughts there. I wanted to run through some of our um, more uh, well-known um, Maccabi USA alumni. Uh, I like grabbing these two pictures because we might associate Larry Brown, the Hall of Famer and the uh, coach, uh, NCAA, NBA, Olympic coach and champion. Um, this is a picture around his playing days with us when he was at North Carolina and he played with us. Uh, similarly, also with Tal Brody, um, who grew up in the States uh, in Trenton, went to Illinois, was drafted in the NBA, but because, in part because he uh, had traveled to Israel with, with uh, Maccabi USA, uh, decided to forego the NBA and play in Israel. And, and as they say, the rest is history. For those of you who are familiar with Tal and his story. Uh, mentioned Mark Spitz before. Uh, Ernie Grunfeld from his playing days, also a, a well-known a general manager in recent uh, years. Danny Shays uh, played in the eight, uh, NBA for 18 years, son of a Hall of Famer, Dolph Shays. We just had a nice event with him uh, a couple months ago. Mitch Gaylord, the gymnast, uh, another gymnast, Kerry Strug. We've had a number of, uh, of Olympic uh, swimmers um, in the last couple decades. So you see Garrett Weber Gale, Lenny Kraselberg, obviously his inspirational story uh, coming from the former, former Soviet Union to Los Angeles. Uh, Jason Lezak, just had a great event with him. Uh, if you remember Jason Lezak and his fingernail uh, were the reason that uh, Michael Phelps uh, broke Mark Spitz's record in, um, it was in Beijing or London um, when they upset the French uh, relay team um, in the swimming pool by you know, one one hundredth of a second. Uh, Anthony Irvin, another very successful swimmer. Uh, Donna Orender is a member of our board and officer of Maccabi USA, um, former head of the WNBA and senior uh, VP of the PGA Tour and um, you know, very well known in, in the sports world and beyond. A couple recent names, again, those of you who are baseball fans may or may not know that Dean Kremer and Max Fried uh, both pitched uh, for Maccabi USA in baseball in the last decade, decade plus. Um, seeing Dean Kremer, seeing Dean Kremer have a, a press conference uh, in Hebrew uh, after his major league debut uh, this past year was pretty cool, uh, as was seeing Max Fried uh, come out top five in the Cy Young uh, Award this past year and, and win the gold glove. So uh, we're pretty proud of them. Then a couple final names. Um, Apologies to my fellow Patriot fans out there, but you may remember Anthony Berksker, who, um, who caught a touchdown in the Titans playoff upset of the Patriots last year. Uh, he, played, he played basketball with us in high school before playing uh, football at Harvard and going on to be uh, the starting tight end for the Titans. And then Andy Murez, uh, again, swam with us uh, and did so well um, that she was recruited and, and decided to join uh, Team Israel as, a, as an Olympian. Um, and is also a participant in the new International Swimming League. Here you get a sense of the, the types of sports. You saw them uh, on the video, so I won't go into detail, but it's a wide array of sports. Uh, some that even uh, might be a surprise for people to consider. You see bridge, bridge is on there, chess is on there. So um, again, uh, as you think about uh, maybe uh, connecting with us, if the, either of those or any of these other sports are a passion, um, We'd love to, to be in touch. <clears throat> Quickly, uh, two of our core um, um, programs are Israel Connect and Level Lev. I mentioned Level Lev as our Tikkun Olam uh, effort uh, that, that every uh, athlete participates in um, in Israel. Uh, Israel Connect is a program that started uh, in the 80s uh, as a pre as a pre games program here in in New, in New Jersey. Actually, before our delegation flew over to Israel, uh, everyone would get together for two days and it eventually evolved into a six day experience in Israel, which uh, is, is transformative. Again, it contributes, I think, to the, to the high um, you know, levels of feedback that we get from our participants and the lasting impact that the games uh, have uh, really uh, in those six, seven days leading up to the games, balancing the training that these athletes are doing um, right before a major competition with the educational and cultural experience and depth uh, that uh, we, we provide 
uh, in Israel prior to the to the opening ceremonies. So you may be wondering how I can get involved. Um, as I said, you sh you should think about competing as an athlete. Um, so um, or you know or you know someone related to you might be interested in competing as an athlete. So here you see uh, some of the different age categories: under 16, under 18, Open, Paralympic, Masters. You get a sense of the cost. We do have um, scholarship available for our uh, uh, junior and uh, open and Paralympic athletes. You also get a sense of some of the other roles, uh, which I'll mention in a moment. Uh, here's a timeline. Uh, so tryouts hopefully are happening this summer or beginning to happen. We'll have to, obviously have to keep an eye with our medical committee on, uh, on the virus situation, um, but we'll begin appointing athletes this fall um, with um, people departing uh, in July. I know it's a a little hard to believe, but God willing, um, we will all be able to travel very soon, be able to travel to Israel very soon and um, have the opening ceremony together on July 14th of 2022. <clears throat> Another way to get involved is to chair a sport. Uh, so we organize uh, our delegation with a, a vast organizing committee. Uh, each sport uh, has its own chair. Uh, and not only that, for many sports, specific teams have their own chair. So there's not just one soccer chair, but there's a U16 and under 16 boys soccer chair. There's a U18 girls soccer chair. There's a masters 35 plus soccer chair and so on. So these are some of the chairs, excuse me, these are all of the sports where we have open chair positions where we could use volunteers. The primary responsibilities for a chair are helping identify the coach with that coach, identifying the athletes uh, and marketing, uh, and it, as it may, case may be, try, having tryouts for those sports. Uh, and there's a fundraising uh, component, uh, not too overwhelming, but uh, we do look to our chairs to help with, with uh, some fundraising by sport. And so there you see uh, the sports that we need, including some, some of the newer sports that are being added by Maccabi World Union this year, such as BMX, biking, uh, and skateboarding, uh, among others. So you can volunteer as a manager or a medical staff member. So we have, as you might imagine, a large group of volunteers to help us uh, make everything run smoothly, to help our teams have a good experience, our athletes have a good experience, whether that's off the court or the field um, or on um, in terms of our medical staff and the training trainers and doctors and psychologists that we are bringing over. So if uh, that sounds of interest, um, would love to, to hear from you. <clears throat> or you could join one of our supporters trips. So uh, we offer uh, a couple different options that we'll be getting details out about. But if uh, you just wanna experience Israel from a sports perspective, this is a perfect opportunity to do that and travel over there and be a member of our supporter delegation, go to the opening ceremonies, have uh, tickets to games, uh, and things like that. So it is 8.45. I think in the interest of time, assuming there are questions, I'm gonna skip over this video, um, but it's, uh, we'll see at the end how we're doing if we come back to it, but it's Bruce Pearl, Jason Lezak, and Jeff Agus, the former uh, US national team so a soccer team member, all speaking about the impact uh, that the Maccabi had on them. So I'll do my best to skip over it instead of uh, play it. It might play for a moment, so bear with me. Oh, there you go. So um, I invite you to either email me uh, or email our uh, generic email address, and we will keep an eye on it. If you have questions about Maccabi in particular, again, you see some of the sports here that we offer, field hockey, uh, triathlon, rugby, and fencing. I wanna quickly uh, wrap up uh, with just a few slides about Maccabi USA at Home, which is our own um, online um, series, which I invite you all to participate in. You can find out more um, on our website or by emailing us. Again, we've had uh, close to 100 events since April 1st. We mark the time of the pandemic by the NBA cancellation in good sports fashion. Uh, so the day after the NBA canceled, uh, we were working from home and we've been working remotely ever since. And within three weeks, we were online and running um, events uh, regularly in the early weeks and months, you know, four to five, six events a week. 
we've now kind of reached a steady state of one to three events. Uh, and those are recurring shows. Uh, the aforementioned Donna, uh, Orinder partners with Arnie Fielkow um, for a bi-weekly show. Uh, you see on the lower left, Dara Torres, yeah. a Jewish swimmer, yeah. I think the oldest Olympic swimmer ever to, to medal, um, was a guest in the upper right, Jeff Schwartz, um, whose brother Mitchell should have been out there on Sunday were it not for an injury. Um, and Jeff Buchans, our president, um, has a monthly show here you see with Stuart Weitzman, uh, the shoe designer, who's also an avid table tennis player um, who has uh, played with us um, uh, at multiple Maccabi A games. We have a particular focus on Israel. Yael Arad, who I mentioned, Ori Sasson. We have, we've had events with each of them. Uh, we had a nice event uh, with uh, the Maccabi Youth Group's um, alumni who were in the IDF, so in Israel, um, uh, early on in the pandemic. We've had a number of Jewish ritual, ritual events, Havdalah, um, team reunions, happy hours, and such. Here you got a sense of the scope uh, of who is in our community. 100,000 plus strong in our database, uh, email, social media, websites, and so on. A few final programs to highlight, our Maccabi Access Program, uh, which uh, sends uh, para-athletes uh, to, to Israel uh, for dedicated uh, touring and training experience. Uh, our Jewish Sports Now partnership <clears throat> with all the other summer Jewish sports programs out there. So URJ, Six Points, uh, summer camp, uh, Vermont Sports Academy, JCC Maccabi Camp in California, all came together during the pandemic to provide uh, training videos uh, for free uh, to anyone um, who wants to access them. If that's of interest to you or anyone in your family, just Google Jewish Sports Now. Uh, one casualty for us of the pandemic was our inaugural development academy, which we were planning for last summer, uh, which we hope to, uh, to have again in the future. Uh, but bringing elite level high school athletes together uh, for a week uh, of training of uh, Jewish uh, experience and um, scouting by, uh, by college coaches. So I'll end there. Um, thank you for your support. I invite you to our website uh, for more information um, and happy to, um, to take any questions, I guess, to look to the chat for the first time, perhaps, um, and see what's there unless someone has seen any, any of the moderators have seen particular questions that they want to highlight as I become familiar with them. Uh, let's see. Do you have a working relationship with Maccabi United Kingdom? Yes, we have a very good relationship with Maccabi uh, GB, uh, as they're called in the business, Great Britain. Um, we, uh, we have a close partnership with all, you know, all Maccabi uh, organizations. I, in particular, the language barrier doesn't exist. Uh, other than the accent with, uh, you know, Maccabi GB in Australia, um, South Africa, and Canada, uh, and we're all we're all organized together in the Maccabi World Union um, sphere uh, under the English speaking desk, and so we get together. We just had a meeting last week, um, and my counterparts there were on. They do great work. Um, they they've helped shepherd a, a spearhead a program called Maccabi Fun Runs, which we participate in, which maybe you've seen in some of your communities. Uh, and other events um, you know, beyond that. So you have uh, several questions about how can we watch the games? Can we watch them online? Are there other ways to watch them? Yes, and that's something we're focusing on. I can't speak specifically to how that's been in the past uh, at Maccabi. Uh, I arrived in 2019. And I know the games from Mexico and Budapest were streamed um, to a large extent. Uh, and that's something we're paying particular uh, attention to for 2022. And for us, it's an exciting opportunity to bring a program that we piloted in Budapest to larger life. And that's what we're calling the Maccabi Media Program, where we anticipate having 15 or 20 embedded reporters, both high school and college students. So if this is an event of interest to anyone on the call or anyone in your family, uh, we'll be having full members of our delegation uh, who not, not are, aren't athletes, but are reporters. And we'll be responsible for uh, whether it's print reports, um, writ written reports, or, or uh, video logs, or photography uh, of documenting uh, the experience, or, or, or doing play-by-play -play and commentary um, of the actual competition. Um, so we, we do hope to be streaming those the games uh, in partnership with that program, and also in partnership with Maccabi World Union. I know they have a particular 
focus on on having the games available uh, for streaming. So stay tuned. Great. So one of our members wants to know that he has a son in the army, um, and he is a judo instructor. And maybe when he retires, he'll coach the American judo team. Awesome. I know we have, we, we have a, a great judo crew. Um, it happens to be that the current overall chair of our Maccabi organizing committee is a wonderful gentleman named Lou Moyerman. Anyone from Philly may know him. Um, and he's a, a judo athlete. Um, and uh, we do a, we have a great judo program and we'd love uh, for more people to be involved. So thank you. No, he, he was asked to be the head coach. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Well, love to make that connection. So we do have a question. Um, do you have any thoughts about Marty Glickman and Stan Stoller from the 1936 Olympics? I, I probably don't have as deep thoughts or um, uh, experience or take as others may have on the call or Mark who asked that question. Um, I know it, um, you know, it was particularly meaningful in 1936 with, with Jesse Owens and, and, and the Jewish members of, of that Olympic team. Um, and I believe um, either Maccabi USA or Maccabi World Union has had a connection um, you know, with their families, um, Marty and, and Stan. Um, I do know also that Maccabi World Union is in the midst of building uh, a Maccabi museum um, on the grounds of Kfar Maccabi Yah, and I'm eager to see um, what's incorporated from, uh, from the Olympics in 1936 in particular. And I like the Trenton, New Jersey reference. Yeah. I, we were on a call with Tal Brody last week and someone made, as those of you who have driven through Trenton know, there's a famous bridge Trenton makes, the world takes. And so uh, that clearly was very much about Tal Brody produced in Trenton and taken by the world and uh, Israel in particular. So that's a good question. Are there any thoughts about a winter uh, games from FD? So we have that one winter sport um, in ice hockey, uh, Israel, the US and Canada send teams. And I, I think we're trying to get a European confederated team in ice hockey for the next games. And were it not for the pandemic, Maccabi Germany was planning what they called a winter sports festival, uh, which would have been held um, just this past January, but that had to be canceled. Um, so I think there's, there's some interest in talk, whether it becomes a full on games, we'll see those games, I would venture to say probably couldn't be hosted in Israel, although I not I do remember from, from being there as a kid, uh, learning that you know, it was one of the few places where in the same day you could ski and surf uh, within the matter of, of hours. Um, but I don't think there's quite enough skiing and snow and ice, you know, ice availability to, to, to have Israel host that, although I guess you never know with Israel ingenuity. Um, so it would probably need to be a European or North American endeavor, uh, but you never know. Um, I see there a reference to the bobsledding team, which does remind me that I made a reference earlier to uh, A.J. Edelman, the Boston uh, native who represented Israel in the sport of skeleton at the most recent Winter Olympics. Uh, you may, may or may not know that he has shifted gears and is now hoping to represent Israel in the four-man bobsled. We had a great event uh, with him online couple months ago with uh, his teammates, uh, I think at least two of whom are Arab Israeli. So it's a great story uh, in particular. We're all cheering him on. They were over in, um, uh, in Korea, I believe, um, uh, training um, or, um, for, the, for the international season. And so we hope to see him over there um, in 2022. Believe it or not, the Winter Olympics are less than a year away. Um, just last week was the one year out mark of the Beijing Olympics. So God willing, again, in, in the next 12 months, we'll have two sets of Olympic games. Is chess included in the Maccabee? Yes. We, 
for in, the uh, smart people. In, in, in Maccabi in Israel, there'll be chess and bridge. One of the highlights of my experience in Budapest at the European Games was um, was watching a bridge matchup and a, and, and a chess matchup. Obviously, it had to be very quiet, a little different than watching a basketball uh, game or the like. Uh, but it did bring me back to my dining room growing up, trying to understand the game that my parents were playing and still not really understanding it. But an interesting thing that I noted is that um, in the bridge world, they have dividers under the tables now, so you can't pick your teammate to give them a hint. I guess there have been lots of ways that people have figured out to over the years to communicate. And so they have dividers under the table and on top of the table to prevent any type of um, nefarious uh, activity. So what you're saying is there's hope still for the group that's watching this tonight. Well, I didn't want to make any. Uh, I didn't want to make any assumptions. I, I'm sure there are plenty of tennis players, golfers, swimmers, soccer players. You name it. We have plenty of master sports runners. No, so see, we had, we had I an have, 86. We had an 86 year old tennis player in Mexico. So there you go. See, one of the guys from my club's watching. Alan Nissabam. He's smiling because he's about to sign up for bridge and chess. All right, you great. Know? <laughs> We'd love to see him. There's, How many countries been, are uh, represented at the games? That's a great question, actually. Uh, they, uh, they, they, so. they quote 80. I, don't, I know there are going to be a couple new ones um, as we're all still celebrating the recent uh, peace agreements uh, in the Middle East. There have already been conversations um, uh. between Maccabi World Union and the United Arab Emirates uh, and such to send uh, delegations for the first time. So we're looking forward to seeing um, seeing those. Some of my favorite interactions in Budapest in particular were with some of the one and two person delegations uh, that were represented. Um, uh, Andorra, I believe, any, any, any European geography experts, I believe it's a country landlocked within Spain, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I see this event is being recorded, so unfortunately, if I got it wrong, it'll be captured. Um, I That's believe okay. also North um, Macedonia, I believe was represented. So uh, Georgia in the former Soviet Union. So I have nice pictures uh, with the representatives from each of those countries. And it, to me, I haven't experienced the Maccabi opening ceremonies yet, but to me and what I've heard from talking to alumni, it's such an emotional experience an eye-opening experience seeing Jews from all over the world march into Teddy Stadium under the different flags and um, representing the Jews from around the world. Great. So uh, our uh, ex-Canadian is uh, not only asking you about hockey, he's asking you about curling <laughs> and any other. <laughs> any other. We have a I lot like of Canadians it. in FJMC. That, and some I like of them it. are watching you tonight. I love it. To our friends up north, um, we have a great relationship with Maccabi Canada. And if curling were to happen, I'm sure it would be in in deep partnership with with our, our Canadian friends. I have not heard that it's uh, it's coming down the pipe. We might see pickleball before we see curling. Um, there's been a big interest in pickleball, um, but we're always looking for new sports um, and perhaps <laughs> curling will be, will be one. Because I just learned tonight, every Friday night we get together from the International Kiddush Club. And I never knew that curling was the official sport, but Stan, thank you for that information. <laughs> <laughs> so great well this was terrific absolutely terrific we couldn't thank you enough we will make a donation to your organization on well, behalf of that. the fjmc we'll put it uh, to good use okay very good um you referenced the recording it's on the fjmc youtube page that i will put on so don't worry okay it doesn't Great. go that much farther than that, but it, <laughs> it, it will be recorded. And thank you, Mitch Dax, for reminding me to record. So um, one more thing that I think you will find very interesting, our next sports webinar is Tamir Goodman, who they call the Israeli Michael Jordan. And oh, yeah. that will be live from Israel at 10 o'clock Eastern on March 7th. So... Wow. That's going to be really, really cool. Thank you, Mr. Sudo, our FJMC international president, for making the shidduch, and we were able to arrange. And Tamir is excited to to join us. So that's next on the docket for uh, our sports webinars. I'm glad I was before him and not after. I saw him play uh, when I was home from winter break in college and uh, against my alma mater. It was a, quite a.
quite a scene. <laughs> that's that's good to know. We'll we'll let him know that. So yeah, Mr. Kravitz, you have some closing words. Um, I just first of all, I just want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Particularly want to thank uh, Marshall Einhorn for an incredible presentation. This was absolutely outstanding. I was just fascinated. Every word, the video, everything was just great. You're just uh, saying that because I'm a Red Sox and Patriots fan. I think. Yeah, he, that's exactly <laughs> why he's saying. Well, but that's, that's okay. Exactly why, but no, the presentation was really. <laughs> and I would just like to thank everybody and look forward to seeing you at our next program. And if you enjoyed our program this evening, please make a contribution to FJMC by going to fjmc.org slash donate. The link is in the chat. And I want to thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. And shalom. And we're done. Thank you, everyone. Have Thank a good you. night. Thank you very much, Marshall. That was terrific. Like, Thank pleasure. you for inviting me. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. I think Marshall,